55 seconds of logos. Also, DC Comics. Also, Weed Road. Side note, kind of glad the movie reminded me I need to take a little trip down Weed Road before subjecting myself to the next hour and 21 minutes. Moore and me took to each other real well. Joe narration. <laughs> Is this supposed to be a troop camp? It's like four people here. It's like 10 times that at a Civil War reenactment. The feeling of doing what you thought was right when it wasn't. Watching The Cosby Show. That choice cost me more than I bargained for. I like to think Relativity came to Warner Brothers and said, look, we can't get another Crow movie off the ground because we're incompetent as f Would you mind making this feel like it's a movie in the Crowverse? As a company, we've got about $20 left and a couple of KFC gift cards. Then Warner Brothers asked them to keep the $20 and proceeded to feed the entire cast on three double-down sandwiches. You're a coward and a traitor. My negative self-image mirror mantra somehow makes it into this movie. Also, hey there, John Malkovich. You calling someone else a coward rings hollow in the days after you made movies with Uwe Boll. I'm just saying. And you murdered my son. I'm begging you, sir. I'm begging you. Who to believe here? One of them is Malkovich and therefore is clearly evil. But the other one is Thanos, who is also clearly evil. You took everything that I love, Jonah Hex. Roll credits. Discount Michael Fast. Holy f This movie wastes an insane cast. You can go free. Free to walk this earth with a mark on your flesh. And glorious hexers. Never would have guessed that this movie would give me creep show and Tales from the Crypt vibes, but here we are. I hung on that cross for days. It was an X, but you seem to be in enough pain that maybe now isn't the time to quibble. See, talking to dead folks ain't natural. Is he gonna narrate this whole f thing? How is bounty hunting what comes naturally to anyone? Roughly 20% of this movie is cartoon, and they 100% did it to save money, and I still wish they'd just gone all in on it. Horsey Gatlin guns for the win! This is every bit as awesome as it is unrealistic. I'm taking 10 sins off, but I'm adding 19 sins for a total of plus 9. <laughs> Not everything that looks cool on paper works well in a movie. They had someone hiding in the coffin? In the middle of the day with the sun beating down? That guy must have really wanted Jonah Hex dead. I want to know his story. Oh well. I guess that building had a pre-existing natural gas leak then? <laughs> All these soldiers stop writing letters and talking and playing cards as this guy walks through, as though they are expected to remain stoic and look straight ahead silently throughout the duration of a long train ride. Pollution. Mom? What do you suppose those men are doing? Why, robbing up trains, Sonny? Because every goddamn movie since 1980 that takes place in the Wild West has to have a train robbery scene. It's on page 232 of the IP's No One Gives a Shit About Bible. Maybe, but I saw those 20 to 1 odds when you walk past them with your big swinging a couple of minutes ago, and nothing about them told me we're safe. Um, this is a cool shot, but there's no potential train robbers on horses anywhere in this shot. Well, that's definitely murder. You're sure? Absolutely sure it was Turnbull. Positive, President Grant. Great. Now, how can we be sure that's Will Arnett? Because that is some super strange casting. Who's next? Megan Fox? Jim from the newsroom? Ha, <laughs> that's just silly talk. He's building it. The plans were never completed. He's building the weapon. The Death Star? Also, a bad guy is building a super weapon cliche. The very fate of our nation may rest on the shoulders of Jonah Hex. You could say this in today's real world, and I would f***ing believe you. He drinks and some of it spills out of the holes in his face because he's got holes on his face. Get it? It's just like Two-Face in The Dark Knight. Another DC Comics property. They have a monopoly on disfigured characters that spill drink out of their faces when they sip drink. Also, why doesn't he just put, like, a cork in there or something? Earplug? What happened to your face? Got myself shaving. What happened to yours? Pretty sure these one-liners are more effective before you shoot the guy, because currently they are literally falling on dead ears. I see about 19 candles and three oil lamps. Does she want fire? Because this is how you get fire. This one, this could be number two. And this could be number skip! Do you think she ever sticks her tongue in that tiny cheek hole of his? French my hole, baby. French my hole. Why does her face look photoshopped in this shot? She's beautiful. We don't need this. And this is more than makeup here, right? They CG'd her face! This is the future, Hex. Intelligence. Information. Wooden stakes in the ground with men wrapping random wires around them. It's all very exciting. There are lots of shots in this movie of him from this angle, where it's clear they just didn't want to spend the time putting on that makeup every single day. And I don't blame them, but I do send them. The wanted poster style font on the city-state subtitles only makes them harder to read, FYI. Mr. Turnbull, uh, sir. I was a captain under General Montgomery until he caught a bullet in the neck in Quebec and, well, in summary. Ah, sudden West Bentley. The hour is approaching. Make no mistake, this country will not see its second century. 
Just once it would be nice to have a bad guy in one of these movies that just wanted to make some money, or maybe take over a company, but every goddamn one of them wants to take over the world or destroy a country, which would in effect seem to hinder them from being able to profit themselves. And who would want to take over a world? Can you imagine the overhead headache you'd be dealing with on a daily basis? Also, seems like as good a time as any to point out that John Malkovich turned down the role of Green Goblin ten years prior. I guess he only wants to do shitty comic book movies. You will tell me where the trigger devices for that weapon are hidden. Earlier, the president's aide said the plans for the weapon were never even completed, but somehow they built all the parts, without plans, mind you, and then realized, whoa, this weapon is way too dangerous. We should break it into pieces and then scatter the pieces around the country so that no one can ever put it back together again and use it, even though it has no plans. Look, it's a really dark shot on purpose. I can't tell if it's a knife or a screwdriver or what, but the fact that it's going to quickly open this top secret government safe is some f***ing bullshit. And look, they had to break into a room-sized safe just to get access to this safe. How'd they crack the safe room door, huh? Pipe cleaners? Don't seem like much. I. But they'll turn the world to dust all the same. Oh. As Hex rides into this town, all I can promise you is that there will be a massive fire before he's done, because look at all that tent and fire. Hex. Nine cuts for six seconds. Did DC let Marvel plan these fight scenes? Here, watch the cuts here. Uh <laughs> Seven cuts in three seconds! Look, this is not filmmaking. This is shooting shit you didn't properly choreograph or storyboard and then fixing it in editing, and it's f***ing annoying. Here comes the fire I told you about. Ah, what did I f***ing tell you? Considering Hex has this ability, why wouldn't this have been the first thing he did? Sorry about it. Killing you, I mean. Oh, well, okay then. All's forgiving. You took my family in your name, Jeff. You made me watch them die. I get these scenes of exposition overload are supposed to make me feel something for Hex, but it all just runs together as if the Peanuts teacher was explaining everything to me. I've been watching you, and I've been watching him. The truth is, it's getting real hard to tell the difference. Bullsh**. Bullsh**. Hex killed some dirty cops. Your dad has killed tons of innocent people. This ghost is still playing favorites with his daddy even in the afterlife. Stupid ghost. You got anything new, Smith? Thought you'd never ask. Lance Reddick is always a welcome sight, but I guess every hero's gotta have a Q or a Lucius Fox or an Ed Demode. All of them on both sides, just a bunch of hypocrites as far as I'm concerned. This movie is goddamn dark, and I don't mean the humor. He takes out the two guards on the drawbridge, and hey, why only two guards on the drawbridge? And the front door is wide f***ing open! I guess the two bridge guards were expected to keep people from going through the door. Do you know who Eli Whitney was? The only thing about American history anyone remembers from elementary school? On the 4th of July, the United States of America will know hell. Yeah, it's called neighborhood fireworks. There is literally nothing dangerous liaisons could do to top that. Hex's gunpowder mini crossbow exploding arrow things are the most unbelievable thing in this entire movie. Those f***ing things are like bullet grenades, for Christ's sake. Iron Man totally stole this scene. Dear sense of direction, would you please mind very much showing up even one time during this catacomb shootout? No? Well, f*** you then. No fuss. I'll step forward. Take me home. Yeah! Jonah Doolittle. Jonah Hex is still alive. If you cut out all the time they say Jonah Hex's full name, this one hour, 21 minute movie would be reduced to one hour and 10 minutes easy. Find me something he loves and bring it to me. This is lazy. It's lazy writing, it's lazy villaining, it's just lazy. Now they will somehow find out about his relationship with Jennifer's body, and then will kidnap her to lure Hex into their trap, wherein she, the prisoner lady, will actually end up helping Hex from the inside. I could write this in my sleep, and that says more about this movie's sub-quality than it does about my writing ability. Here is the 101st film edition of the dying guy whose horse still carries him to a safe place cliche. Even in death, vengeance is the one thing you can't let go. But you absolutely can, because you're dead. Crows! See, one day with weapons like this, you'd be able to flatten continents. Maybe, but if that's true, you shouldn't be able to hold that in your hand without consequence. Six long years I spent in Dublin learning to dance the Lanning Ball. Michael Fassbender is clearly in a completely different movie. It's one I'd much rather be watching. Oh, there is that. Look, I'm not ready to jump on board The Jennifer's Body is actually a masterpiece bandwagon just yet, but Megan Fox is a much better actress than she's been given the chance to be in most movies. And as much shit as she probably had to go through with Michael Bay on the Transformers movies, this seems even more insulting. She is literally only in this movie to give Hex someone that can be used against him in the climax of the movie. She's not even given a valuable scene in the setup to all this. It's gross. At least ten cents worth of gross. Movie definitely ripped this shot off from Lost, but also, this movie, dumb as it is, actually makes more sense than Lost. So, two cents. No one will be seated during the absolutely bonkers nonsensical nightmare portion of the movie, which goes on for at least a minute too long. As literary form, these things is useless. 
And I can feel your brain rotting right below my hand right as we speak. All over your child for wanting to read is the first rule of great parenting, I hear. You took everything I love, Jonah Hex. Do you know what that feels like? This movie has treated all of this backstory as a big mystery to be revealed, but we know Turnbull killed them, or tried to. There's zero reason this scene couldn't have been in the opening montage of events, and putting it here just ruins whatever flow this movie possesses. Best party trick ever. Send the mission to the grass. Lieutenant, U.S. Army. Dude, you just barged in here. Telegrams cost money. There's a whole transaction of... This Jonah Hex sends the army a coded message scene goes on for some time. I guess crows are important to this movie. I mean, he said after Nailey died, crows started following him, but he never explained why. Regardless, this scene of a pounding score, Jonah on horseback with the dog at his side, and this murder of crows flying overhead is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. And I've seen Battlefield Earth. So now he's using the crows like Batman used the bats in Batman Begins? We appreciate the services that you have rendered. He's gonna kill Sudden West Bentley, isn't he? Shouldn't she already be in the water before you fire up the engine? Movie doesn't know how to boat correctly, and based on the scenes in Lila's quarters, it doesn't know how to motorboat correctly either. Fassbender is only able to keep up with Hex here because the movie needs him to. Hex has taken down multiple rooms full of foes, so this one guy giving him a problem is stupid and silly, kind of starting to hate this movie. Look, I get that his family died in a fire and that fire is an important theme, but having the bad guy here literally fight him with fire? A bit on the nose, man. Let it be known, movie that is PG-13 can imply violent R-rated decapitation as long as it shows some shaking feet during the act. No! I want him to watch. Well, knocking him out seems silly then. What if he doesn't wake up in time to watch? Since they know Turnbull will be attacking at least one of these events, why would they still be having any of them? I'm the weapon! Thing I say every time I start getting a boner somehow it makes its way into the script. I will! It's interesting to note that this is a worse climax than Wild Wild West, and Wild Wild West had a giant spider robot. Honestly, Hex's prostitute girlfriend being proficient at combat and firearms shouldn't surprise me, and yet it does. Like, 50 straight seconds of gunshots. And yes, it does get old very fast, especially given how dark it is, and you can't really tell if any one bullet is having an impact or not. They survived this. You're telling me that entire crowd got out of the way in time and none of them were hit by the cannonball? Because I'm telling you, they did not. As we flash back to Jonah's younger days and his earlier run-in with Turnbull, I could not yawn harder if I tried. This is a 45-minute movie constantly looking for ways to stretch itself to feature length. If I have to, I'd rather watch the credits if I'm being honest. This is like 300, but without the nudity or the super deep pit. Going underwater doesn't save you from an explosion of this magnitude! Happy 4th of July. Little known fact, Samuel L. Jackson turned down this role because he couldn't say Happy 4th of July, mother America needs a sheriff. Nah, we've got John Oliver. We need uh, Dory. to find his What are you doing? What are you doing? People be like, I was there a comment on the video when it just posted. Fans be like, I'm a member, mother You can be a mother member too. Get videos early, extra videos, bonus podcasts, swag discounts, and more. Click the Patreon link in the description or at cinemasins.com to take your sin to the next level. You took everything that I love, Jonah Hex. I don't even know who you are. This here's my story. Who am I? You sure you want to know? What happened to your face? I'm, uh... I'm terribly sorry about all the damage, sir. Oh, I've been, uh, uh, working out. See that? Uh-huh. I got that from Nina Rollins. Sophomore year, I'm going down on her, right? The only joy she found was in a daily ride. But you continue to do what I ask of you. You want to see the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed? All right! The first rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. Do you understand the consequences of what will happen if you knock that man out? Do not. Knock him out. When people once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. I'm the weapon! Commence primary ignition. Fire will!